Shrimp trawling is the most wasteful type of fishing. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN, for every kilo of shrimp caught, up to 20 kilos of other fish are unintentionally killed. Earth Report travels to the Philippines and Mexico to see if this waste can be dramatically reduced. Typhoon season in Calbayog City in the Philippines. This city started life almost 300 years ago as a tiny village. It now has a population of more than 160,000 people, many of them very poor. Over a third live on less than $2 a day. They, like all Filipinos, rely on fish for more than half of their protein. We preferred fish as our source of protein compared to meat. Fish is good for our health and would not cause high blood, hypertension. So that's why we preferred to have fish, have it dried or have fresh one to cook it directly and serve to our local populace in Calvary City. But the population of the Philippines is rising so fast it will double in 30 years' time. The demand for fish is extreme. The surrounding seas can't supply enough fish for the people. Our population has doubled, tripled already. There are more people now in the sea trying to catch a fish. In the late 1980s, our catch was averaging about 36,000 metric tons. And uh, in the 1990s, it went down to about 29,000 metric tons. Three quarters of all the world's fisheries, according to the FAO, are fully exploited or overfished, this one included. It was very alarming. And uh, the marginal fishermen were complaining about their catch. Marginal fishermen are the local inshore fishermen. They have exclusive rights to fish in a restricted fishing zone, stretching up to 15 kilometers from the shore. It works, but it's not enough. Local fishermen and the mayor have agreed to become the test site for a new way of fishing. The Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources felt that probably this is the best place for them to conduct their experiment because we are very receptive to, to any experiment that we can do to ensure sustainability of food supply in the future and to ensure that there is food for every table for the next generation of Filipinos. The Bureau is experimenting with bycatch reduction devices, or BRDs. This one helps juvenile and tiny adult fish escape the trawl net. That way they can reproduce and eventually be eaten. This uh, uh, horizontal, the grid is horizontal, and this device used to reduce the cuts of uh, juvenile feces and other trash fees. The juveniles can go out and the commercial feces go to the bug of the troll net. The Rudy boy, captained by Rudolfo Maranchillo, was selected by the National Bureau of Fisheries to conduct tests on the bycatch reduction devices. They are designed to cut down the amount of so-called trash fish. These fish have little commercial value and form a significant part of what is known as the bycatch. That's all those fish that are not shrimps. Bycatch reduction devices effectively is any modification to a fishing gear to reduce the amount of bycatch. Well, there are two different types. One works on a simple physical sorting of the catch in terms of size. It will either exclude the larger species or it will exclude the smaller ones. The other type of bycatch reduction device is based on the behavior of the fish. Some fish have the intelligence or they can respond to the visual stimuli of being able to see that there is a window of escape in the net.
but there's been tension aboard the Rudy Boy. Here in the Philippines, as in most parts of Asia, all the fish caught, including trash fish, is used. Traditionally, the deckhands are allowed to keep and sell the trash fish. But the bycatch reduction devices radically cut the amount of trash fish caught. There was a big difference. Before, when we were not using the devices, there would be a great amount of reject fish compared to now. As so often with the introduction of new technology, efficiency is increased, but at someone's expense. In this case, it's the deckhands that lose out. These fishermen earn very, very small amounts of money. So they have very little incentive to use a bycatch reduction device because using a bycatch reduction device will actually cut their, cut their salaries, cut their income. So if they're not going to use BRDs, even if there are regulations saying that they should be using BRDs, those regulations would be almost unenforceable. The only way Skipper Rudolfo could keep the crew happy was to find other ways to compensate them. Because my crew were deprived of having some income from the reject fish, I give them 5% of the money I make from the catch. It's worth it to Rudolfo. His men spend less time sorting out the fish he doesn't want. The deckhands still sell whatever trash fish is caught. This income is supplemented by the 5% bonus from the captain. We believe that the issue of bycatch in Southeast Asia is more focused on the catching of juveniles because this really affects the sustainability of, uh, of our fishery resources. So we have uh, focused on the JTEDs and uh, we have already assessed in uh, some of our uh, trials and experiments. We already are almost certain that this is efficient and uh, practicable to be used. 3 a.m. The boats return to port, the fish are sorted. Their catches are down over the previous year. But in the short term, the fishermen are prepared to try the new system. Because of using the BRD, our income is smaller. Sometimes we don't even have enough to buy food and to support our family needs. But we are looking forward to the future, to the situation changing. Those small fish that have escaped from our nets will be caught by us again in the future, when they are bigger. The fish are taken to the marketplace. It's been here since the late 18th century. But even as the city expands, the market itself is shrinking. Before, there are plenty of fish, plenty of species. Different kinds. That fish port is full, even to the street. Slowly, little by little, the, the catch decline. The prized fish, shrimp for example, are quickly dispatched to lucrative markets in cities like Manila. Fish soap. The less desirable species are sold locally. As for the trash fish, they're used as feed in the local fish farm. All over Asia, fish farms have sprung up in a desperate attempt to keep the supply of fish rising in line with increasing populations. The mayor is not sure it's enough. Restricted zones, BRDs and fish farms may not ease the pressure on the marine resources. People have experimented reaching the moon, but we don't invest so much to our marine resources, which is just here and we use it every day. And uh, if people were able to experiment, spend so much money in trying to reach the moon, why not spend money also in experimenting to ensure uh, sustainability of our food supply in the years to come. Guiamas, Mexico.
Famous both for its carnivals and its shrimps. The city was established almost 250 years ago on the Gulf of California. It's the second largest port on Mexico's Pacific coast. Guiamas is one of the major shrimp producing cities of northern Mexico and shrimp fishing is the most important Mexican fishery in terms of both foreign exchange and employment. At the last count, according to the government, Mexico was producing over 120,000 metric tons of shrimp per year. Half of it is farmed, about a quarter is exported to the United States. But Mexico, like the Philippines, catch juveniles and trash fish. However, there the similarities end. When it comes to bycatch, the Mexicans simply don't use it. There's no demand. It's shoveled over the side. They have no interest in retaining bycatch, so they have every incentive to use a bycatch reduction device because it means less work for them. Less work because less time is spent sorting the catch and the quality improves. The shrimp aren't crushed. And the juvenile fish have a chance to grow, providing bigger catches for the local fishermen. One of the programs most exitous in which the Instituto Nacional de Pesca has participated has been the systems in the dispositivos excluders. One of the most successful projects of the Fisheries Institute is the implementation of the bycatch reduction devices. Many people from other countries have assessed us. We found that it's possible to reduce the impact of bycatch on various sorts of fish by using different technologies. Some technologies are still at the experimental stage, but some are already compulsory, like the TEDs. We're still working to improve these systems of bycatch reduction. TEDs, or turtle excluder devices, have become widely used in Mexico. Several turtle species are endangered, and turtles, if not excluded, can damage nets and the shrimp catch. But TEDs are also important because without them, shrimpers legally can't send their catch to the lucrative markets up north in the United States. A TED is a simple grid placed inside the net. Shrimp and small fish can get through it. Turtles can't. They escape through a hole next to the grids. Here in Guiamas, the shrimp trawlers not only use TEDs, but also a bycatch reduction device called the fisheye. It's the kind of BRD that relies on smart fish escaping while the shrimp can't. Shrimp don't have directional control when they're swimming. So the point is they can't escape from that type of bycatch reduction device. With the new excluder installed, we can get up to 70% reduction in bycatch. I believe we should spread the word about these devices. The authorities should tell the fishermen about these devices and make them compulsory. If they can prove to the fishermen that their catch won't be affected, well, what they'll lose will be nothing compared to what they'll gain. After all, they're species we don't want. So why do we want them on board if we can let them go? After all, many of those fish we're going to need later. The major beneficiaries of BRDs in Mexico are the small-scale fishermen. It means there will be a better chance of catching mature fish in the future. Un chorro arrastre te agarra 50, 100 kilos de camarón. 
A trawler will catch 50 to 100 kilograms of shrimp, but may also catch 100 to 300 kilograms of red snapper with an average weight of about 150 grams, which is not commercial. It's basically killed and thrown overboard. But if you let them grow to 1 kilogram or 1.5 kilograms, we will probably be talking about an even more profitable species. For example, in a good year, if they got 9 tons of shrimp, they would have thrown away 50 tons of other more commercial species, which potentially could have represented more benefits than the 9 tons of shrimp. The small fishermen need species like red snapper because they're not catching shrimp in the numbers they used to, and their incomes are falling. The price of shrimp is dropping in the United States. Meanwhile, down here, the prices of fuel, oil and maintenance are rising. It's out of balance. Why do you think the prices have collapsed? According to the senior fishermen, it was due to the large supply of shrimp from the shrimp farms. Hence we would like to have a certificate to differentiate between wild and farm shrimp to get a better price. Not all the seasons are fruitful. In each of the last three seasons we didn't even get a ton. The demand for shrimp is now so big that shrimp farms are mushrooming. I think shrimp farms are spreading indiscriminately. Now we have to look at the impact that shrimp farms will have on the environment because there will be some. This fall in the shrimp price is due in part to the overproduction of shrimp worldwide. Mexico isn't the biggest shrimp producer yet, but it's moving up the ladder fast. In this particular region, they'll produce 60,000 tons of farmed shrimp compared to the 10 to 20,000 tons of shrimp max that we catch wild. It's a dramatic difference. Fish farms are not here to compete with the sea, but to help to avoid marine species in the wild, like shrimp, being reduced too much, or becoming extinct, like has happened with other species. This shrimp farm produces more than five tons of shrimp per hectare each season. The small fishermen are desperate. Not only are shrimp prices falling because of the farms, but the big shrimp trawlers that don't use BRDs are destroying their future by killing juvenile fish. Some small fishermen fish illegally outside the proper season. The sanctions, if caught, are serious. The army chase us and shoot at us. Sometimes they hit the boat, sometimes they hit the fishermen. Now we know that if we take the risk and they catch us in the act, they will send us to prison. It's not like before when we only had to pay a fine and then we would be released. Now they send you to prison and take all your equipment. Perhaps this draconian policing of the shrimp habitats off the coast of Mexico is working for the shrimps, if not the small fishermen. These officials from the National Institute of Fisheries aboard the Don Raul are seeing specimens of the right age and size. Shrimp catches are healthy and bycatch is reduced with the increased use of BRDs. But Oscar Valdez is concerned for the future. For him, there are too many unknowns. We need to know what the actual state of the seas and the fisheries is to find out if they're overexploited. We have to look into new and different resources developed by scientific research. But for some experts, science can provide only part of the solution. When we talk about bycatch reduction devices and we talk about fishing technology and perhaps we think that we're dealing with a technical problem. But in fact, 
we're looking at, at a social problem and an economic problem because the reasons that so much bycatch is being caught is to meet the needs of the poor people. So in that case we come back to um, some of the, the big issues like uh, good governance, equity, uh, social justice, but then we're getting beyond uh, potted shrimps.